We're being awful serious in this, our first episode. Uh, we are. What's going on here? <laughs> I think it's it's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh, really? I, I'm just no, doing I'm what kidding. I always do with my hands when I'm by myself. I'm holding my penis. <laughs> and Charles, talk comics. Hi, welcome to Hav and Charles Talk Comics, episode one. My name is Charles Herring, and I'm here with Javier Gonzalez, who is my friend. And we are starting a podcast today with our first episode. The whole premise of this podcast is that I give him comics to read, and he gives me comics to read, and then we get together and discuss it. It's a pretty easy premise to figure out. Hi, Hav. How are you doing today? I'm good, Charles. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now that the pleasantries are over, since we've actually been talking for, what, about 30 minutes over here before we started recording, the comics we read, um, I asked him to read Black Hammer, and he suggested I read Avengers Under Siege arc, back from 1980-something, back when, full disclosure, he and I were reading comics in junior high. So now you can age date us. So we've both been reading comics for a long time. I think, Hav, you've been reading comics continuously, or did you take a break? Because I kind of stopped after junior high and didn't get back into it until I was an adult. I stopped probably freshman, sophomore year in high school, and then very randomly would pick up comic books that my college roommate would have, the great Andy Shattuck. We were potluck roommates at UT, and he was big into Image and X-Men when we potluck were roommates. And so I would keep up sporadically with what was going on then, and then picked it back up in law school, and on and off since then. Okay. Not so much now picking up new issues, but yeah, that's about right. Okay. Well, I that's, that's interesting that you got into, or at least started reading comics that weren't DC Marvel mainstream a lot earlier than I did because I don't think I saw anything like that until I was well out of college in in my 30s. I think I picked some up at the library and I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff is fun. But I missed the whole 90s, everything is extreme time period of comics. Um, Although I've dabbled back in reading that on the Marvel Unlimited app. I'm not impressed with it. (laughs) I I have read very little from the huge 90s yeah extreme everybody's wearing jackets and has a lot of pockets uh everybody's super muscle bound but no the image thing was interesting i like i said i would pick i would just he'd have them literally laying around now bagged and boarded because he was very meticulous about that but spawn savage dragon cyber force all that stuff i'm blanking on other names but yeah it was, uh, and then I think he would also occasionally pick up a Wizard magazine back then, so that was a good little primer on what was kind of going on generally in the comic book, you know, industry. So that was cool. Yeah, I that that just was a lost, as I said, the lost decade for me in comics. But I have enjoyed catching up on a lot of that stuff. So I I guess we should just get right into it. But what'd you think about Black Hammer? It was great. Let me just say that right off the bat. I thought it was great. Uh, I liked the pacing. It was a slow burn. Kept you interested. Kept you kept me reading anyway. I won't speak for anybody else. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm realizing now as I'm sitting here talking about it. I am not as savvy when it comes to the names of the characters. Like right now, I'm thinking of different characters, and I, I can see them. I can picture them. I can think of who they're maybe analogs for in my mind. Uh, but the names are, I'm just realizing, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're escaping me, but no, I thought it was great. You, I I loved it. That's why I asked you to read it. When I read that, the first volume that you read a few years ago from the library, I just saw it in the library when I perused their graphic novels and pulled it. I thought, okay, this is, this is just an enormous amount of fun. The art and I'm not an art guy. The art is incredible and reading about why he chose the artist he chose, the the writer, at the back of the uh, graphic novel that I had w- was brilliant. And it just, it works so well. And yeah, it, it is glaringly obvious who a lot of the characters are, including the, I mean, Barbarian, Bar, Bar, Bar- is that how, you, you don't remember his name, but is clearly the Martian Manhunter. Right. 
and Super Gale, or is it Super Gale? I mean, she's Captain Marvel, and I love, right. I love the fact that she stays small instead of going from small to an adult. I mean, it just flipping it was just brilliant. That just simple change. Sure. No, that was brilliant, and also the the problems that causes for her, which we can talk <laughs> about that in a second. Oh yeah, which was just a great problem to, to to have for the series and for her character. Yeah. So one of the things I absolutely love is how each character is reacting to being in this place where they've ended up. Abraham Slam kind of accepting it, which is kind of what you would really expect a mashup of Captain America and I, I've read somewhere that, oh, it's it's kind of a Batman character. It's really um, Wildcat, isn't it? Oh, kind good of a, call. Yeah, it's a mashup of uh, Captain America and Wildcat. Because Boxer, um, but was the scrawny kid that bulked up Captain America. I mean, he didn't use... He, he clearly wasn't powered, but still same idea. Just accepting it. Okay, I'm going to be a farmer now. <laughs> Well, and couldn't get into the military, the Captain America mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. And then you're right. I had not thought about Wildcat until you just mentioned it. The whole boxing thing, because he didn't get a super ser super soldier serum. He did it the old fashioned way, which is just working out with and boxing mm -hmm. and turning into a non-powered super. And just a smidge of, it just came to me earlier today when I was reading the second volume, just a smidge of Daredevil. Because of the whole, his mentor got in trouble with mobsters and was killed in front of him. Which kind of made him become the superhero. Right. That's another, shoot, okay. I see, I got stuck on t uh, Captain America and stopped thinking about it. I'm glad <laughs> you didn't. What about um, Colonel Weird? Is that uh, his name? Yeah, Colonel Weird. Uh, Who is, okay, so I've gone around and around in my head that yeah he reminds me of some other characters whether it's i think you could make a captain adam a very loose captain adam uh dr manhattan thing where he's a, a man that can go through that that has no place in time yeah that that's definitely that part of it yeah um i was really getting dr manhattan from him but more human keeping with the Dr. Manhattan part. I think you take the idea that time, he lives all time at once, but you keep his humanity and the insanity that it's driving, driving him into instead of with Captain Manhattan, it just takes his humanity away. Right. Yeah. Cause he's obviously suffering. Oh yeah. Very much so. And then I mean, just to go down that that trail a little bit, you know, you, you see in that first that first volume that I also read the I think it's Secret Origins. He tries to bring over his girlfriend back way when, and that does not go well. Oh yeah, I just I I had blanked on that. That was just a incredibly sad, more of an instantaneous thing. You talk about on the uh, Captain. Dr. Manhattan, everything Captain, the Dr. Manhattan arc of he was with his girlfriend when he came back and then she got old and he got a new girlfriend. Completely different arc. But instead he's going to bring his girlfriend and then she dies. Horribly. Because yeah. there is definitely horror comic themes going through all of this. And I guess besides him, I mean, besides him, and by him I mean Dr. Manhattan, Captain Adam kind of analog. Mm -hmm. I, not that I've read a whole bunch of other kind of weird, spooky, ghostly superheroes necessarily, but of course I thought of Dead Man or Spectre. And I'm not, a, I, I'm, I think I've told you many times, I, I was more of a Marvel guy with some exceptions than DC. But I don't know if you, if you thought of that at all or. Had any thoughts about that? I just, I obviously it's not a straight analog for anybody, and I, I don't think any of them really are, except for well, with some exceptions. I say that, um, but I don't know if you thought about anybody else 
I, uh, I, with I, relation to Colonel Weird. Yeah, I really had nothing uh, on him other than Dr. Manhattan, and because of Dr. Manhattan, obviously, the Atom. And I don't know much about the Atom. I don't know anything about the Spectre. I think I've read maybe one comic or two comics that he's been in, because I, I also... One, I've never been really into the that type of comic. It's not what I would consider my thing. Uh, I always feel like I should say, not that there's anything wrong with it. All comics are good comics. They're like dogs. Uh, <laughs> but that's why there's a variety, is because some things don't float everybody's boat. So... Yeah, when when you look at when you look at those, I don't really get it as much. I I will say the first, however many comics in that first volume that pleased me is we kind of get a background of a lot of these characters, but they stay well, away. Speaking from of that, I've... what's that? No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, um, I was just saying that that we don't find out about Black Hammer, really, in that first arc, do we? incredibly little that was yeah. that was one thing that frustrating but a good frustrating because obviously he was a big player the comic book is named black hammer <laughs> i'm doing list voice for some reason that's um, okay i know i just it just i catch myself doing that and you know i think there's one scene from a flashback for is it what is his name code name or you know secret identity name his name slam Abraham Slam? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's one scene where Slam is battling somebody that's, you know, I think Black Hammer shows up and easily dispatches the the supervillain and kind of tells him you're out of your weight class. Maybe it's time to hang it up because it's the 60s now, not mm. the 40s or 50s. That's I think that's one time we see Black Hammer and then there's a, a weird, very generalized reference to, the, to, to Black Hammer on the 10-year anniversary that he either gave up his life getting them there or tried to leave and lost and, and disappeared and presumably is dead. Mm -hmm. Does that ring a bell? That is correct. Okay. That, that is correct. I, I love the subtle hints about a jump from the golden age to the, uh, to the silver age that you were talking about right there because Abraham slam is obviously a golden age hero that did not, would not, could not make the jump to the silver age. And they show that. Um, and Black Hammer is clearly a Silver Age type comic. I'm not going to give some stuff away since you have not read the next set, but he's clearly Silver Age a reboot. <laughs> I'll, I'll tease that. And I was going to just hypothesize, or I'm, hypothesize me using my fancy words. <laughs> I was going to guess he's some kind of Thor analog, but I don't know. I don't I, just because it's a hammer's in a name. Okay. Of course, I think of Thor, and I saw him flying around. Yeah presumably using said hammer but okay i don't know well, I, I never thought more. about i know he's thor. i know he's powered I, I that's about it yeah as i told you before we started this i was reading rereading the uh, second volume and it you'll be pleased to know it does get into black hammer's origin cool yes and that's why i felt really comfortable teasing that because it was legitimately read it this morning and i was teasing Something about that Thor. I'm gonna have to think about the Thor thing, but that'll be uh, for for uh, the two people that I'll talk into listening to this. Our, our next episode will be Hav reading and me, obviously rereading the second volume of Black Hammer, and I'll be reading what is it, Squadron Supreme? Yes, the original twelve issue miniseries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, an 80s comic. Hav wants me to read all of the team books I didn't read when I was reading Spider-Man. <laughs> and uh, I get to catch up on stuff, new stuff that is great that I, for some reason, got past me. Yeah. Oh, and since I was teasing the next episode, um, you're going to read Stumptown. Okay. Because we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get us away from... Oh no, I just said what you're going to read. I'm sorry. That's going to be the next episode after that. We got to finish Black Hammer. But okay. it, at some point it's going to be Stumptown. Cuz Never heard of it. Give me a little preview, please. Okay, Stumptown is Stumptown I think is what they call Portland and it is a she, the main character is a former veteran 
well, not a former veteran, is a veteran, a military veteran, who is a basically an alcoholic detective in Portland. And it is an awesome comic. And they made a one-season television show with, uh, oh, Colby. Whoa, what what is her name from, uh, she was in the Avengers movies. Agent Hill. Yes. Uh, she was the main character. We did, we... We talked about this. She was brilliant. Right. And the comic is brilliant. So uh, that that is that is what I want you to read because I'm being selfish. A lot of these things I'm going to show you, I'm going to have you this read are probably things I want to reread. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the guy from uh, New Girl. Yes, Jake He's Johnson. In the TV show, correct? J- yeah, yeah, Jake Johnson. He is in that as well, who I adore him also because uh, he was Spider-Man. In, into the Spider Verse. That, that's right, and I just rewatched that the other day, just so you know. Oh, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta say, I think I've said it before. It is the best comic book movie ever. Uh, gosh darn it! I, I'm not gonna disagree. Uh, <laughs> it's just there's a lot of great ones. It's, yes. it's definitely up there. Yes, and it's selfish of me because it's Spider Man. I was going to say, that's your wheelhouse. I don't think it, where I'm uh, speaking out of school here when I say Spider-Man is probably by far your favorite comic book character. Uh, there, there, is, there is no comparison to me. I've rooted, I, I have been a Spider-Man fan literally since I could remember from watching cartoons as a child. Gotcha. Yeah. And you're, you're X-Men, right? I was more X-Men. Uh, Batman, really, when I was young. Okay really young batman was the go-to when i was like kindergarten first grade those are the ones i'd always gravitate to probably because i saw um all the adam west reruns Mm -hmm. were on tv when i was a kiddo oh yeah and then when my grandfather would take me to a convenience store or a a five and dime if i had a comic book to buy and there was a batman one that's when i would get and then later on middle school me yeah uncanny x-men x-factor and my favorite from that group is Cyclops. Um, <laughs> I've not kept up with his recent developments, the recent developments with him. I know there's been a lot of, of good and bad with him recently, but no, the 80s, uh, 80s Cyclops is my go-to dude. So, yeah. Your favorite is Cyclops. Yes. If I had to pick between Batman and Cyclops, it would be Cyclops, yes. <laughs> Batman's a close second, almost like a one B. I I'm not touching that now, but we're gonna return to that at some point. I never knew that. Okay. I that is interesting. I don't think I've ever met anybody whose favorite character was Cyclops. It's I don't know why. I mean I do. I've thought about it because I know he's not the Yeah, he's he's made some mistakes. So yeah, no, yeah, Cyclops. So it's I also really... had an affinity. Go ahead. Go no no finish. No, I was going to say also X Men related. I mean, it's the X Men, and even though my name Javier, I go by Hav, I spelled with a J. Professor X, Xavier. That was also just kind of a, another thing that drew me in. Now, I, the character. I mean, I love the character, and uh, I love his powers. But again, Cyclops more because he was. Eh, I think because the you know he's flawed, and oh, it seems to always try to do right and maybe doesn't quite get there a lot of the times it makes some poor decisions and yeah. has to deal with it well that's true that that makes a good comic book character or character in anything uh just realized something um what's uh professor x's first name charles yeah so there we go there you go so we didn't name the uh, podcast based on professor x but <laughs> I, I just realized that right now. Well, I, I realized it as you were talking. <laughs> that is interesting. Yes. Well, hey, to to, to not so seemingly as, uh, or smoothly segue back into Black, Black Hammer, uh, uh, but I'm going to. You should. The one, I was fascinated with Madam but- Dragonfly. I, I, and speaking of analogs, I think there's more DC there with a House of Mystery. Because she's got that cabin, uh huh, and she's uh, seemingly tied to it, and bad things happen to people that go in it. 
So I think that's kind of the analog there. Her in particular, I, I couldn't, I don't know. But I know for me, I immediately thought of House of Mystery. I don't know if, you, again, I know you're not, you're not a big DC guy, but if you had any ideas yeah. or thought about that or read anything about that. I, I had nothing about it. I, I did not have any clue on what she was about. I, I, I just assumed she was kind of like any of the Crypt Keeper type. Uh, we have to have someone to build all of these disparate horror stories on. So, right. The- did you? Was the uh, was her background in the beginning? In that first, yes. Okay. So, who was her? Who's the analog to the guy that she? There's did- a, It is very much. A- Go ahead. Oh no! You're you're gonna say it. Say it. No, it's a very much an intro with a crypt keeper, you know, well, you know, you know, talking old timey with, you know, a, a, a tale of woe and, yeah. and horror and and she's she's voice over in the whole thing mm-hmm. for you. And it's uh yeah, and of course, you know, there's the 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 deal that is made that isn't quite what she thought it was. No, it was great. Yeah. And and, great. and then the villagers. He, I, I was talking about the villagers. Oh, that that come up during that, and one of them goes in the house and gets trapped, and the other one attacks her, and then turns into man thing, swamp thing, <laughs> uh-huh. something thing. I, yeah. I I mean, it wasn't even a. <laughs> that was the easiest one I had to get. <laughs> right. Uh, well, no, Super Gale was the easiest. All right. Yeah, Super Gale. That was just great. I, I mean, it was the the Captain Merle. Hey, kids, wander off into the dark with a stranger, and you'll get superpowers. Yeah, it was it was a different time then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different time. <laughs> and, and and then the twist, of course, where when she says the magic word, which I am blanking on, maybe you remember off the top of your head. No, and I just read it. But of course. She she gets she gains her powers when she's a kid and turns into an adult, so flips Captain Marvel slash Shazam on its head. In that regard, and then she ages when she's not using her powers, but when every time she says her magic word, she turns into a super powered youngster that never ages. Yeah, which as we see during the comic. Causes her a lot of problems when she's trapped like that in a small town that doesn't know she's Super Gale. Right, and for a while there, I was a little confused why they've been there for for a decade, correct? Yeah. And nobody's noticed that Gale, is still a f- who lives on the outskirts of town, has never aged. Yeah. Yeah, so there seems and to then, be some holes in whatever weird uh, town that they're living in. Yeah, there's 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 some there's some mystery obviously still there about what exactly the town is where it is can they can the townspeople leave and come and are they on a planet are they even on earth i think we, we find out a little bit about that towards the end of the arc but the, that one hole i was going to say the one hole about her never aging and nobody noticing i think maybe i may be extrapolating a little bit but she gets in trouble at school on her first day of fourth grade which is probably her her 10th first day of fourth grade and her mom, who's, you know, her mom is the, pretending that her mom is Madam Dra- Dragonfly, comes by and just casts a spell on the, on, the, on the principal. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. Yes. And makes the principal forget. So I'm wondering if that's something that they're just doing over and over again. So uh, nobody notices Gail hasn't aged in a decade. Yeah, and, no, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Madam Dragonfly clearly has powers to manipulate things going on in that town. So. Yeah, I thought that was funny because you, you just, I mean, is she, I think she's supposed to be, God, I think they said fourth, nine years old. She's always going to be nine years old. Uh, is she or nine years old? Now. Is that how old fourth? I, I, I don't. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, no, it's fine. Maybe 11. I, I was thinking nine, 10 years old. Yeah. So that's the age of comic book readers back then was that old. Right. Well, not back then when this was written, because this was what, 2016 when it came out. No, but a lot of folks, yeah. a lot of people started reading when they were about that age. I know I kind of did. I didn't get into where I was religiously buying them every every week 
were certain titles I wanted to get pick up every month until probably fifth, fourth, fifth grade. Yeah, yeah, fourth, fifth grade. And then for sure all through middle school. So that was my wheelhouse. Oh, and just to keep on talking about Gail a little bit. And then, of course, in, in that first arc, she's obviously frustrated. She, at one point, reveals her feelings for, are we saying Barb Alien? Barb -alien? Yeah, Barb Alien. Yeah, I, I'd have to. I didn't look at a pronunciation guide. I didn't either. <laughs> well, she at one point, I think, if you remember, she reveals that she maybe has a crush or or like like likes him. Yeah. And of course, he he likes her, but not in that way. Yes. Well, it's and because then, she's you know, she's alien to him. Huh. What with being female, right? But she, but you you see that he has feelings for the priest. Exactly. That was what I said. Yeah. That was. Um, ah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. She's alien to him because she's gotcha. female. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. And then we get his whole, you know, backstory, of course. And you mentioned earlier, he's clearly, that's, I think you said it's the clearest analog. Oh, yeah. Martian Manhunter. Except the, clearly he's being cast out of his society, which I, I kind of liked. Oh, wait, that sounds bad. I don't like that he was cast out because he's gay. I like the use of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, oh yeah, the entire civilization is destroyed. It's giving us an idea of what kind of civilization that they have. I, I found that interesting. There, there's, there's some good themes there. So what have we missed so far about this uh, first comic? We haven't... I was just looking at a character roster or uh -huh. a team roster. We have not talked about... Talkie walkie. <laughs> no, we haven't. I, I, yeah, that was that was it, it was fun, funny, interesting. I, I got nothing when it comes to analogs. I don't know if you do. I mean, he's clearly the vision. Oh, duh. No, that was a joke. I mean, he's not clearly the vision in any way whatsoever. That just popped in my head because we just finished watching WandaVision. Uh, but not clearly, but of course, that's at least a loot. I mean, he is a, some kind of android. Yes, he is. He is. Um, you'll get his origin in the next volume. Well, and there was mention of that. Is it? It, it, it do, do, does he or she or it identify with gender? I thought at one point Slam called Talkie Walkie a she, or did, did I misremember that? No, you didn't. Or just make that up. You didn't. They refer to her as she. Okay. Yeah, most definitely. Which shows my, which shows my bias because until that point, about thought, I feel like a good ways into it, I thought. Talkie walkie, I was identifying she as a he, and that was wrong. So. Well, they were hardcore genderizing her anyway, uh, cooking dinner, cleaning up after them. That's true. Except that's just robot stuff, but it was really, I'm sure, intended play on the gender roles. You know what? Good point. I, even though that's, I saw that and happening, I did not think cleaning, cooking, woman. I still. I saw Android and thought, dude, robot. So that, that's a, that's bad on me. Yeah. Well, that's what robots do. That's we, yeah. we, we, we build things in the home to repl to ease the role on women. That's why we have vacuum cleaners <laughs> and appliances. Oh, I'm telling Julie you said that. Well, do you, you can't tell Julie I said that because you know she'll never listen to our podcast. Oh, she, she's already asked when she can listen to it. Oh, really? Sorry. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, then you don't have to tell her. And just so everybody knows, in case there is anybody that doesn't know us, Julie's my wife. Well, yeah. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, and, but and yeah, my was, wife think... is non-existent. And now y'all are thinking, because I made a joke about gender roles, which I thought was clearly being sarcastic about the patriarchy, but Hav took it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, obviously you're being sarcastic. I was just going with it. I know. I, I, I'm just messing with you. We're, we're being awful serious in this, our first episode. Uh, we are. What's going on here? <laughs> I think it's it's like I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh, really? I I'm just no, doing I'm what kidding. I always do with my hands when I'm by myself. I'm holding my penis. Um, oh, there you go. Perfect. So see, now I've ruined that. Now, fortunately, I'm going to be editing this, so I can just snip that right off. And I'm really sorry. I <laughs> just circled back around from what I was doing to using the phrase "snip that off." Uh, and I'm going to vote that we keep all this in <laughs> because it's brilliant. Uh, fortunately, uh, as I said, since I'm editing, once I learn how to edit, 
Right. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I probably will leave that in. Because we got to have at least one genitalia reference an episode, right? I mean, come on. Exactly. It's what well, that's. The, it's what the audience wants. Exactly. And everybody wants a visual of you holding your penis while doing this podcast. <laughs> I I am trying very hard to hold still so you don't hear my chair squeak. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, so um, full disclosure for anyone to... who happens to listen to this, this is as fly by night of a first episode as you could ever do. We spent 30 minutes trying to get the mics to work and work off this wonderful clean feed. Now I'm going to do a plug for the uh, website that we're on cleanfeed.net that allows us to both be sitting at our own home with our microphones plugged in and it's recording it in the browser. And I did figure out how to save it. I'm just downloading it every once in a while. Just to make sure we don't lose it if something goes wrong. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, um, Black, you know, circling back around Black Hammer, I uh-huh. think now we've hit the main players. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, for, for those that haven't read it, I can tell you as somebody that has recently read the first volume, the first six issues, I can highly recommend it. Uh, if you're a big action person and want a bunch of, well, there's actually, you know what? I take that back. There's a fair amount going on. So I, I, I just, I liked it. I would wholeheartedly recommend it. It, it, they, 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 they save the planet and are transported to this, this town and are trapped there. And they've been there for 10 years. Is that fair? Synopsis. That, Charles? that is a, that is a fair synopsis. And it is as podunk a town as you can imagine. It is straight out of the fifties. Oh, we haven't talked about the sheriff. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So the uh, sort of it seems at first that Abraham Slam is the main character, right? When, when you kind of first start it. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's not. As you get into it, it's not. But it kind of presents as, hey, the older white male is the guy. So he has a love interest in the town who happens to be the she runs the local diner and she's the ex-wife of the sheriff in the town. Who, who surprisingly does not like that Abraham Slam is canoodling with his with his wife, ex-wife, ex-wife, yes, and whose name is of course the sheriff Trueheart. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Well done, yeah. Which is just a nice little bit of literary whatever, uh, yeah. just to make the bad guy's name the antithesis of what he is because he is just not a good person oh yeah he is small town sheriff bad small town sheriff in any kind of literature or movie that you want to think about he 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 is really well written i i mean everything in this is well written i agree yeah just one of my favorite comics over the last 10 years and again agree it was and you mentioned earlier, Charles, you're not a big art guy, um, and and I'm not either anymore. When I was a kiddo and first getting into it, I would definitely pick up stuff based on the art and, you know, what I considered not my cup of tea art would turn me off, and I got over that real fast when I got into the stories, and now I'm very much more story, 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 and if the art is great, good. If it's not, I can usually get through it because the story is good. But this just has both. It oh, is, it is yeah. visually stunning, and the story is amazing. That is absolutely I, true. Art art has grown on me over time. I, I have found that I can read some bad stories with great art, and I can read some... I, I don't enjoy it as much. And I can read some great stories with... I won't call it bad art because there's not a lot of bad art in comics, but just not my cup of tea art. And I'll really enjoy those comics, even though I kind of find the art blasé. But when you match a, a great story with great art, it is just so much better. And I am beginning to understand when people talk about how a really good artist can really enhance a mediocre story with, with the choices they make. I, I, I'm yeah. coming around a little on that. Yeah. You were mentioning well, uh, it, 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 that uh, you felt that in case people are not interested in stories without a lot of action, uh, superhero stories, I kind of am lean the other way. I absolutely love superhero stories without the superhero big set pieces over and over again. 
I, I like more the trials and tribulations of being a superhero outside of the big fight. And me too. I, I, I Something that I've, obviously, not obviously, I've done a 180 on because, of course, you know, kiddo me, middle school me, early high school me was all about, okay, when's the next big crossover event? When are we going to get to see Avengers versus X-Men? <laughs> uh, which would, there was a, a four issue limited series in the eighties, for example, uh -huh. and see that fight. And no, I'm, I'm, I, I agree. And in, in that same vein, you know, this is very much, I think, I don't know if we've mentioned it during us talking just now, but this is, you know, one of, of a myriad of, of quote unquote, superhero deconstruction type stories. Oh yeah, where they're really, really getting into it and doing, and the fact that he's doing it, I think you mentioned in 2016 after more than a couple pretty, pretty big shot writers and and creators and artists have have done it before and doing it in a, to me, to my mind, a seemingly unique, cool, different way, on top of every everything else that's come before it is 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 nice and cool and refreshing and awesome to read. Yes. I strongly concur on that. I, I'm, I'm <clears throat> laughing a little bit as you were talking about that because this kind of leads right into the the other comic arc we're going to talk about. When you said you were uh, when you were a kid, you were just waiting for the next big fight set piece in a comic. Well, I didn't really read the group books uh, growing up, and one of the reasons is you're right. Pretty much one of the things I noticed in this is. When I read Avengers Under Siege and a lot of these, the fights are the better parts of it because of some of the stuff that's going on in the, quote, non-fighting portions of the comic. Right. So, and go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. That's what were you going to say? So middle school me, 80s. Did we look up when was Under Siege? Anyways, I, we can figure that out. Uh, but I'm going to say I'm going to guess 80. 88, 87, maybe. Well, I'm going to pull uh, up uh, Marvel Unlimited right now and take a peek. It'll tell me. Anyway, so, yeah, I was... In, and I think we've talked about this before, not not today, but one of the reasons I gravitated towards team books in my, you know, elementary school and middle school mind was, well, I, I have a finite amount of allowance money, for example, where, you know, I got allowance for cutting the yard, cutting the grass or mm -hmm. the, mowing the yard and doing my chores. And, you know, for example, I'd have, I get $5 a week in allowance, maybe yep. with that when I was, and so there were some tough choices that had to be made. Oh, and yeah. if I could get a team, a team book with all the Avengers, Iron Man, you know, think of a classical lineup, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, et cetera. Or I could just get Spider-Man or just get Captain America. I would pick Avengers and I would pick Uncanny X-Men and I would pick Alpha Flight at one point in time. And, <laughs> and, Justice, and Justice League, uh, for yeah. the, the, one of the few DC comic books I would pick up uh, on, on and off uh, back then. And so that was kind of my, my wheelhouse of picking up those team books. It was just a it was a cost benefit analysis or, or something like that for me. <laughs> no, absolutely. But you're right. Absolutely. I, I I'm not knocking that. Uh, 1987. I looked it up. Okay. So it was in 1987. Under siege. What were your thoughts from back when you read it as a kid? Because you brought it up to us pretty brought it up to me pretty quickly about that. That do you think that was what you wanted me to read? as an arc that you really appreciated from when you were a kid. Yes. It was one of the first ones that came to mind. It just, it just stuck out because it was, it was a, it was a big deal. The Avengers to me get brought to their knees, it could, you know, divide and conquer overarching theme. And remember, you know, you're, I'm a kid. So I was like, ah, this, I'm I was pretty sure that was not the end of the Avengers, but they were, they were doing a good job of making you worry about was everybody going to make it? And, uh -huh. you know, how badly was the team going to be affected? How was, how was cap going to be affected in particular to, for me? And, you know, when we were talking about it, just so you know, uh, I think I've of course mentioned to you when I was a kid reading these, I, I didn't have, 
you know, my, my brother is four years younger than me. I didn't really have any friends that were into comic books like I was or nearly to the extent. I quite frankly don't remember every talk, talking comic books to anybody. Middle school, elementary school, high school. It was my thing. It was it, it, not in a bad way. It was just something I did and I enjoyed um, by myself and kind of solitary. But I really, really enjoyed what I enjoyed and knew what I liked, knew what I didn't. This was one of the 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 storylines I, I that stuck out. And then so when me, you and, and Caesar started hanging out and realizing y'all read comic books and then we'd go see, you know, the, the superhero movies that have come out now. And it, I, I can't stress enough how much I enjoy just pretty much seeing anything brought to, to the big screen or small screen for that matter nowadays, because when we were younger, shoot, we had Wonder Woman, the reruns of Batman with Adam West and I guess Smallville at some point. And then I, I didn't really talk comics to with anybody until Andy Shattuck in college a little bit, but he was more into it than I was at that point. And that we talk occasionally about it and we talk about what we liked and, mm -hmm. but that was, that was it. So yeah, it was definitely this, this to go back to your original question, why this one? Yeah, it was just something that, that always stuck out to me as, as a, a big deal. One of the big events, even though it wasn't really a crossover, it was pretty much self-contained. I think there's one that's, there's one issue of Amazing Spider-Man, I think, where it's kind of a unofficial little snippet in a, in a section of Amazing Spider-Man back then that I don't think is included in the, in the collections a lot of times. Oh, I read that. And yeah, it, okay. Yeah, it because yours. when I looked up the arc, because I've got uh, Marvel Unlimited, when I looked up the arc, it said it was Avengers 270 to 273. Amazing Spider-Man number 283, and then Avengers 274 to 275, and then West Coast Avengers volume 2, number 16, and then 276, 77 of Avengers. So I just read all of those. Gotcha. Which it gotcha. made me realize, and I'd have to go dig, I may own that Spider-Man comic. I did own some of them, because that's 283, and I do have Amazing Spider-Man 300, although it ain't in great condition. Uh, that's where uh, Venom first introduced right and i uh, did pick that up yeah back then so this uh, was definitely right in the time i was really reading comics you know it's uh interesting you talking about it being a solitary thing i read comics i didn't talk to anybody about comics i met caesar in college and we never really talked about comics in college i think we had maybe one or two brief discussions but we really didn't talk about comics and we were pretty good friends in college so it is interesting that it kind of took you being the catalyst of the three of us talking comics and doing that. And at some point, we have to tell Caesar that we're doing a podcast about comics. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we had mentioned it to him. I don't like think we year. have. Have we not? No, I was going to do. I was going to do a bit on our group text where where I where I did a little whole thing. Caesar, I got to tell you something about Hav and I. Hav, is it okay <laughs> if I tell him? We, we've been keeping this from you for a while. <laughs> well, we had talked about, you know, Caesar out of all of us actually has some radio experience. And we were actually talking about him maybe coming on board and helping out producing this yeah. thing. Although I don't, I don't think it, I think you've got a handle on it, but I think. It'd be oh, cool oh I do. I, oh, no, no, I really don't. I do not have a handle on it. I do. Caesar does legitimately has a radio production experience because he produced radio. The only experience I have with radio is I did also briefly do sports at KNTU, and I was, what's the word for it? I was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I was, I, I, oh, I was, I was, I was just not good. I was very Were not good. Were you boom goes the dynamite terrible? Um, well, I could do a six minute, because I got nervous, I could do a six minute uh, sports report in about three and a half minutes. I was like the microman in there. You remember the microman guy who could talk really, really fast? Well, that would what I would do, because the problem is I had everything. I had everything in front of me to read, and I can read really, really fast, and I can also talk really fast, so I was just spitballed my way through those things. <laughs> well, and if you're like me, I, when I'm nervous speaking, I know I speed up. Yeah, and I, I I do I fa talk fast, and it's just I, for me it's a nerve thing, uh -huh. and I have to guard against it sometimes. <laughs> so, so no, it, it it is very interesting how much. Whereas comic books and comic book movies are so much more 
mainstream now. We were undercover comic book readers in the 80s. Let's be honest, it was not a hugely talked about hobby. No. With a lot of people. So so Under Siege, not to, to segue back since I, I took us off track again. I'm going to say in the big, overall, I enjoyed it. It also reinforced in me the reasons why I didn't read team books back then. So it was kind of a dual thing. I would love to see this arc be rewritten for modern times. And I was mildly glad that they got rid of one of my least favorite Marvel superheroes immediately after the first the first comic. And that'd be Namor? That would be Namor. Is that how we say it? Namor. Namor, yeah. The I Submariner. Have, yeah, the Submariner. I have never liked him, and maybe it's I maybe I was set up not to like him because I would read Fantastic Four and he was the bad guy. It, it, it's and that kind makes of, sense. Yeah. But I, I just don't have uh, that much rooting interest in him. Although I will say in fairness, the whole him trying to do right and not take over, the only reason he went back down there to fight was because they kidnapped the woman he loved. I'm like, okay, Namor, I'll give you that. You're, you're going to let them decide who their leader is, but... You just want to rescue the woman you love, who, of course, is a grotesque monster in her own eyes, because comics. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did I did enjoy that. I just, it, it reminds me of how sometimes, oh, I don't want to say anything negative about the, the people that were writing comics back then, but they, they're just, they, the stories, because they were writing more directly for kids, were a little cruder. We had not hit the, even with what's gone on now, when they write towards kids, they write better because they, they give the idea that kids can get it now. So they're very obvious about things. I, I noticed some stuff as we were building up to the Under Siege event that I, I found interesting. And I, I mentioned I was going to talk about this with you during our little break. One of the things I I noticed in it is there seems to be an interesting triad going on between Hercules, oh the Black Knight is that who he is, yeah, and the Wasp, but it is only on the focal point of the one character, the Black Knight, who seems to have a crush on both Hercules and the Wasp, and neither one of them likes him in that way. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and I mean. And I would not have noticed anything like that as a kid, but looking at it as an adult, I'm like, wait a minute. This really seems like he can't decide which one he likes, and he's, he he wants them both to get along, and I, I think he's he, he wants a thruple. He just doesn't have the terminology for that yet. Uh, and, and this whole thing, too, of the going through it with the... We were talking about the gender roles in Black Hammer. The clear gender role kind of things going on with Hercules not liking the Wasp being the leader and how dare a woman speak to him and give him orders. <laughs> right, there, there there wasn't much subtlety there. Oh, or, or any at all. And the pure anger of, I'm going to just call it that, the incel superhero, Black Knight, being so upset that she clearly doesn't have sexual feelings for him, so clearly she has no feelings at all for him because he got angry later and when he got beat up later in the arc and she's legitimately worried about her friend and fellow superhero who was almost beat to death. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was... It, it Sometimes it was stuff like that in some of these more team books that kind of... Uh, pushed me away from it. It was the always the in even back then, now glaringly artificial conflict in order to try to make it more interesting. But even as a kid I got the sense of the, oh well they're the why 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 can't they why can't they get along a little bit? Oh, because they're trying to build tension. So they do a better job nowadays in comics of building tension between characters to progress the story. And I was going to say, it is definitely a book of its time. Yeah. And, you know, to me and you, I don't know, when, when we talk about years like 87 doesn't seem that long ago, and then you do the math, and you're like, oh, wait a second, that's that's a little bit, that's, uh, that's a while ago. Uh, I, it seems a long time ago, because I was in junior high then. So, yeah, a 80, 87 is a long time ago. And I know Roger Stern, at least for me, you know, Roger Stern, I think, well-respected. Uh-huh. 
writer from back in that era. I don't know how much he still writes, if at all. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know if he's still with us. I'm, I'm hoping he is. I know a lot of... I know I don't think he was a spring chicken back then, maybe. But I, I do remember, fondly remembering his run. I think I've told you at, he left Avengers shortly after this arc because there were some things that came down. This is all stuff I've read from different articles that, you know, at, the editorial at Marvel wanted changes to Avengers that he didn't agree with. Some of which, I, my understanding was making Wasp and Monica Rambeau, Captain Marvel at the time, mm -hmm. seem less than capable of being chairperson of the Avengers. And he didn't like that. He had, you know, for, for all the faults of the book, he had done some work to build up the, the female characters back then. Yeah. To, to and, my mind. And you and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. He absolutely shows especially when you talk about for his t for the time it's very very progressive the woman is in charge and she's having trouble with the troglodyte males that women in charge back then were always having and let's be blunt they're still having now so i get it i this is not it really was well written it just is of its time and but even at the at that time period it wasn't my kind of book and just for for Anybody listening, the the Under Siege storyline in Avengers back then, it's it's pretty basic. The the new Masters of Evil, led by uh, Baron Zemo, Helmet Zemo, gets together a new Masters of Evil. They divide and conquer the roster at the time. And, you know, Zemo's whole point is just to, I think, and, and tell me your thoughts, I mean, general point is just to crush Captain America's spirit. Oh yeah, he wants um, to he wants to destroy Captain America. He wants to crush his spirit and kill him by the end. Uh, he wants him to break him and then kill him because he killed his father. Right. Which actually, for so, for a uh, supervillain, that's a decent reason. I mean, when you get into some of the reasons why supervillains are doing things, that one I can understand. Yeah, you kill my father, prepare to die. Yeah. And so, but I, I am interested to hear, and we've purposely not talked about this specifically. I, I am examples you 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 reading it now for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm interested to hear, yeah, what what you, the takeaways you had about you know how it how it how it holds up or maybe doesn't quite hold up or or different different parts that you were just maybe maybe a little cringeworthy maybe maybe okay that still works or or whatnot. I mentioned the cringeworthy of the Black Knight's attitude towards the Wasp being into another guy. And again, that's the, the that's something women have to deal with even now. So it's well done now looking at it that way of let's just show this kind of thing. So it's a good job on that. I did find some of the villains maybe were better than some of the heroes. But I think you have a lot more especially back then, because you were talking about how he got in trouble or they didn't like the fact that he was giving Wasp and then Captain Marvel all of these op opportunities. You yeah. look at that, that you're probably going to have more opportunities to mess with the villains. So you can do some strong building, Yellow Jacket realizing stuff that's going on uh, from a woman's perspective on how, oh, Baron Zemo's letting them die and doesn't care if the, his quote team survives and he he's just as easily could kill me as well and moonstone moonstone just trying to get oh what is the name of that character that that the villain that who's not really a villain he's insane and has powers which i like by the way i i, I like the not not i don't like the idea of using someone who's got a problem because of his powers being manipulated but i like the the comic book idea of that. Mr. Hyde? No, Mr. Hyde's just Mr. Hyde. No, the one that makes the black dome over the... Oh, Blackout. Blackout. I think is his name. Yeah, wow. That's why I didn't... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what? Comics. For a long time, I was, I was confusing him with... In my head, I, I knew it wasn't Cloak from Cloak and Dagger, uh -huh. but same kind of... I don't know. I For some reason, yeah, Blackout. Yeah, yeah, and Cloak is a good guy. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so Blackout, well, and because Moonstone was manipulating him, but in a different way, and then Baron Zemo manipulates him even more, and I love the way he fights back at the end, because when someone goes in and doesn't manipulate him, 
Uh, Dr. Druid, was that the... Who I have I don't know from Adam. That was a new one on me for Marvel. Yeah. He's a he's a weird character that came and went and came and went, I think, a couple times. Okay. Yeah, he's new to the team and he was he's an old character that had been brought back, mm-hmm. apparently. What I know from him is really from that era where they I feel like they were trying to make him into a Doctor Strange type character. Oh, clearly. He's of course you see him manipulating things mm-hmm. along the way to okay. for his own gains. I feel like, but yeah, no, and I, that's who eventually I think becomes chairperson of the of the Avengers at some point. Oh, I I truly appreciated him when he went into the mind of Blackout instead of controlling him. Just said, "Hey, this is what's going on. What do you want to do?" And oh, yeah, I I don't want to. I mean, I guess you can call that manipulation too, but at least it's manipulation of giving someone a choice. <laughs> So no, I there right. there were some nice touches with the villains. I I also liked when you talk about the crossover into Spider Man. It shows the reason why some of these people are villains, and it's a theme that goes through with Marvels when they do these team ups of the bad guys. They make bad choices. That's why they're villains. So you have oh, is it Crusher Creel or the Absorbing Man? Is that the Absorbing Man? Yeah, something Creole. Absorbing yeah. Man. So so the Absorbing Man and Ty- Titania, Titania. Yep. That that was the crossover to Spider-Man. And it starts out because she, after being told by both the Absorbing Man and Baron Zemo to lay low at the hotel. Lay low. Don't do anything. Don't get in trouble. We're doing this. We're going to need you. She goes and robs a jewelry store and gets caught and found out by Spider-Man. So... Bad decision. So there's a big there's superhero fight, and then he finds out, and then it was a nice, it was a nice callback, like everything was back then to uh, Secret Wars, because that was where the first time I Titania, Titania, wow, that's gonna bug me. And I think it's Titan, 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 Titania, but I don't know. Titania, okay. Where she and Spider-Man first fight, and to hear there in that in that comic, they both are really concerned about fighting the other one again, because Spidey's talking about she just packs a wallop, but I mean she beat these guys, and she t- almost took me out. It took everything I had to defeat her, and she sees him and goes, "Oh my God, he's the only person that's ever laid me out. I can't fight him again." I was like, "That's nice. That's very realistic too, in my mind." as realistic as comics can be. So it was nice to uh, actually get to read a uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. And, and just, I think worth noting this, this uh, version of the masters of evil, I think eventually it, a lot of them turn into thunderbolts. I, they, Very a lot of them the do turn into thunderbolts because Baron Zemo definitely turns into thunderbolts and uh, Moonstone turns into thunderbolts. Now I kind of want to find out if Moonstone is paralyzed at the end of this. I liked some more recent Marvel Thunderbolts episodes. Am I saying that her name right? What is her name? What Moonstone? Moonstone. Did I say Moonstone? Yeah, you did. Okay. You said episodes. You meant you meant issues, I think. But yeah. Oh yeah, I did mean issues. So yeah, Moonstone. I've enjoyed her as a character, and I know clearly she's not paralyzed anymore. But that was an interesting note. Where okay, Hercules is dead. Oh wait, no, his heart is beating once every ten minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> okay, to, to go back to my Thruple comment, I, I left some stuff out. I mean, he is a Greek demigod that wants to spend time only with men. So I can see why the Black Knight is intrigued by that. <laughs> yeah, and I just got, you know what, again, going back, I, I still didn't pick, I just thought it was, you know, Black Knight wanting everybody to get along and having a crush on Wasp and and wanting to to be he, I think he's still seemingly new to the team and wanting to fit in and wanting everybody to get along and uh-huh. blah blah blah. Sure, but he definitely was playing the jilted want to be love interest to Wasp and then yeah he wanted everybody to like him. So now I get that and then did you like how you know because of blackout i think they got they got captain marvel out of the story pretty pretty fast right yeah yeah that well she's in the terms of pokemon that my uh, nephew would use when we're, she's definitely op overpowered right 
so they and they they strategically said, okay, we can't deal with her. We have to remove her from the situation because we've got a plan for everybody else. Because let's be blunt, Hercules is just brute force, and they've got brute force. It was interesting. Here, I'm going to send you. I, I'm going to send you a screenshot I took very early on when I was reading Under Siege. And and I'm I'm gonna guess I'm probably it, as as we go along I'll probably since we do have a Twitter page when this episode releases I'll send some of these screenshots out uh, on that. So what is the Twitter handle again? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I set up the Twitter handle before I really got you locked down to do the website. <laughs> That's all right. Or the website the. Uh, Oh, I can't multitask. I'm male because uh, now I'm looking at my phone. Um, the Twitter handle of this is J and C Talk Comics. Cool. Yeah. And is and ampersand or is no? That it's just A N D J A N D C Talk Comics. Cool. Yeah. Well, you're one of the only two people that follow it right now. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so we got that going for us. Yeah, we got that going. A whole two followers. I see. So to to and I'm waiting for it to come through. Let me see if it came through. Um, so I am interested what and we didn't pick these two stories because we were we had an idea to compare and contrast them. I don't think Black Hammer and Avengers Under Siege. But um, so yeah, you you had some thoughts about how they uh, size up against each other and well, a, a lot of it's not not even the deconstruction. It's just the way that the medium has advanced and the world has advanced so the information you're getting from the the stuff i've been kind of joking about with the black knight is what a lot of comic book readers would look for and be able to read about themselves that wasn't really necessarily meant and and maybe it was maybe roger stern was putting in kind of some of that very under the radar because in no way whatsoever could you put anything that could be seen by anybody as homosexual in a comic book. Right. Uh, in, in 1987, even, I mean, the, that is, that would be, they, they'd have lost their mind. So now we go to 2016. I be, like I said, and I may be getting the date of black hammer wrong, but it was around then. You have a, yeah, it is. you have a gay alien, right? right. It's a main, a, defining part of his personality and it's not played for any kind of joke fortunately it's not it just it's who he is and it's what he still has to deal with as, as it goes forward i mean it's why he was cast out of his life uh on his own planet that there are just things that you can update as you go along it also looks more at the grittier real life versions of what it would be like to be a superhero without it without it going on the whole thing with gail i mean my lord trapped as a 10 year old but when you're an adult inside yeah and you have no choice of of getting older i mean that's that that's pretty i, I want to say deep but i don't think that's the right word it but it is a very well done part of that comic it is. I agree. And going back to Avengers Under Siege, you know, for, again, upon reread, you know, it is what it is, and I still enjoy it. But back then, I know for me, seeing Hercules seemingly die and then still being near death, and I think you find out later, brain damaged. There's a whole arc about him going back to Olympus after Under Siege mm -hmm. and recovering more. That was new to see for me in books where the, the 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 heroes were beaten down so soundly and then jarvis being beaten to within an inch of his life who was oh yeah i think to that point in time untouchable and mr hyde does a number on him and then of course black knight and then of course not of course but at the end you know zemo getting into captains the very few personal effects that, that Captain America has left. And there's that one scene of Cap on his knees with his box of mementos strewn about. Oh, that was brilliant. It, it was just heartbreaking as, yeah. as for, for middle school me scene. I mean, that's Captain America. 
so yeah, I just it does uh, one of the, you know various reasons why <clears throat> the arc sticks out to me for back then, and you know t- speaking of deconstruction, not not nowhere near on the level of what has gone on since then, and shoot, even at that point in time, I think Under Siege is after Watchmen or right almost contemporaneous with it, and Squadron Supreme, and then you have other deconstructions that have happened, but it was a little. A little bit of a mini deconstruction of of superheroes, and just that you got to see, and maybe deconstruction is the wrong word, but just the breaking down of the characters, and and by breakdown I mean like knocking them down. Yeah, that I had not seen before, because usually the superheroes win. And back then, between this and Mutant Massacre, there was some tough reading for for middle school Hav middle school me uh because the the heroes weren't winning at the end of every issue yeah in fact quite the opposite well see i I don't know i i got used to that was i that wouldn't have been surprising for me because spider-man often did not win (laughs) gotcha (laughs) spider-man got the snot beat out of him on a regular basis (laughs) because he was and again part of that is because he's a solo superhero so he's out there all on his own he's also let's see not got the country behind him like Captain America, because ain't nobody behind him, and not got immense wealth like Tony Stark. I mean, he got problems. I, I'm I'm doing a little... I had forgotten. Roger Stern, you, you talk about beating him to death. He did Death of Superman. That's right. Yeah. He's all about get, having a superhero beat to death. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I totally forgot about that. Um, And he wrote one of the greatest uh, Spider-Man comics ever. I had forgotten that was him. Which one? The kid who collects Spider-Man. And it oh, is not yeah. a, it's only a great comic because it's just, a, it, it's not even a great necessarily Spider-Man comic. It's just a great comic. Have you ever read it? I have, but it's been a long time. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was great. I'm not going to go into it. So no, he is definitely a giant. He also did the Hobgoblin. He created, co-created the Hobgoblin with John Romita Jr. Yeah. And if I ever make you read some Spider-Man, uh, we'll talk about the Hobgoblin. Uh, that was one of the nice things about when I jumped into, when I jumped into this and read the Amazing Spider-Man one in there. It, it, it's right in the middle of a massive Hobgoblin arc, which was a lot of the comics I read when I was reading Spider-Man as a kid. And there were some Easter eggs in there on the hobgoblin because if i remember correctly and i haven't read or checked this roger stern came up with the hobgoblin he knew who he was no one else did and then he left and then they made him someone else because he was putting all of these he was doing what really good writers do he was faking and 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 making it look like oh it could be him it could be him it could be him and i saw a massive easter egg that told me who it was in that one comic, now that I know. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, so for years when they discovered who the Hobgoblin was, it wasn't really who it was. <laughs> gotcha. And who was that? You know what? I don't remember. Or if it, I ever it's did okay. know, I don't remember. Not, we're, we're not talking about Spider-Man. I, I'm talking about Spider-Man because I always talk about Spider-Man. But uh, <laughs> it, it's just I got to give Roger Stern the... Uh, the props here, because, yeah, good grief, he wrote some brilliant stuff. Oh, and, and he is he is still alive. Yeah, I just saw that. I, okay. I pulled it up. Just, just since you, I mean, he may not be with us. He's only 70. Uh, so. Okay, wow. Yeah, some of okay. these writers, they, they just got such brilliant, brilliant careers. Oh, that was what, oh, Black Hammer. I had thought about this earlier, and you know, as we go forward th- with this, I'm going to have to learn to write some of this stuff down because I'm not a good note taker. One of the things I've liked so far about Black Hammer, that first little arc, and it clicked with me what's going on there, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Okay. Not a, not a huge fan of that. Um, and I don't know which crisis it was. It's one of the, it's one of the crisis. It, it was the one where it happens because after one of the original ones, Superman, Superboy, and, and uh, Lois Lane are all in a bubble universe together. And the whole crisis right. happens the next one because Superboy is just pounding on the walls of where they're trapped, but they were trapped there in order to, because that's what saved the whole 
universe at the end of the last one when they thought they died. I think that's what happened. And again, not DC guy. So how much of what's going on with Black Panther is that kind of thing? Black Hammer. Oh, did I say Black Panther? Yeah. I swear you said Black Panther. No, I, I am absolutely no, I sure when you said Black Pan- Black Hammer, I'm sure I said Black Panther. So, yes. So, no, good, they're kind of no, trapped. Good point. Yeah. And I'm... Shit. Sorry. I'm uh, I'm doing a little spoiler on that because I thought about that today. I was just reading the next group. So, I'm really looking forward to you reading the next set so we can talk there about is a that. little. There is a little flashback in the in the first six issues where they talk about, you know, there was some kind of, I forget the bad guy that was it was a worldwide threatening thing uh-huh. that yes, to anti-god. Beat him, they had to be sh- he's called yeah, they, anti-god. anti-god, which of course made me think of dark side and all that anti life equation. Uh, yes, he he is absolutely dark side. I mean, there's not even he's just dark side. And and then I do remember understanding just from the little bit that's that's teased in the first six issues that part of the them winning was having to be shunted into this into this little weird town somewhere unknown. Yes. So no, uh, good point. Everything about Black Hammer is awesome. To to use a comic booky type word, I just I I love that comic. No, it, it's I'm looking forward to the next six issues and next few volumes and it's not a, it's not like there's 300 issues yeah to go try to catch up on so no, it's, it's which is can be no go ahead sorry oh no no you were gonna say it can be daunting yeah i was gonna say because you know especially even me who used to you know even when i got into avengers or or uncanny x-men having to figure out the backstories to which they would mm-hmm. always drop information about what's happened in the past, but it's, oh, yeah. it can be daunting. And then if you don't read for, you know, don't, don't continuously read what's going on. And if they're trying to, to be consistent and I know they've reset everything now, it's mm-hmm. seemingly every year to five years, <laughs> but it, it, it can be a little daunting and intimidating to try to jump into something. And black hammer is nice because, Hey, there's not 300, 500, a thousand issues of of these of these characters, you you can read from beginning to end and and know everything there is to know about that universe, which is cool, yeah. absolutely cool. Oh, wait so. till I make you read Gwenpool. Ooh, and and, and I know of Gwenpool. Uh-huh. I know the general premise, I think. Uh huh. But never never read it. I adore Gwenpool. That'll happen. We'll, we'll okay. read it again. I, I told you it's I make you read stuff. I that's the wonderful thing I found about the. Uh, the Marvel Unlimited app is I can go back and read almost any arc of any Marvel comic. So if I want to look something up or, hey, I read this as a kid, I want to read this again. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to read that again. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So and I don't know if I have, I think I have that. I think I need to check. I'm pretty sure I do. Okay. I'll check. Okay. Because I know I have the DC one. I thought you, you canceled your DC. Or did you? Maybe I canceled the DC. Yeah. Yeah, you canceled your DC one. I'm not going to incriminate myself on here about <laughs> you and the Marvel Unlimited app. Okay. Okay, I got you. <laughs> no said. But it's actually, for the price, it's not that bad. I, I think it's like, I think I just renewed or it's about to renew, and I think it was 70 bucks for the year. So. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad at all. Unlimited. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I. All right. Well, oh, good. Uh, I just I, I for I'll go through bouts where I pretty much read nothing but comic books. Um, I've gotten back better about reading books again because I like to read books. But and I'm listening to books on Show tape off. in the car. But I'm sure this is all boring for anybody that might be listening. Now I bet you it's not. I I have enjoyed talking to you about this. I think I I, I don't know. Is this a good place to wrap this up for now? I think it is. I was just gonna say. Uh, you know, I think. Yeah, I think it is. I think we've talked about it. I think we. I, I think I know where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. I and I, and not that it's a bad or, or 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 anything. It's good. I just I was interested to hear after you read it what you what your takeaways were. And I think it's it's about in line with me. And yeah, I think it's a good place to stop. We I think uh, I think it it was happenstance that we picked these two <laughs> stories. Yeah, Black Hammer versus Avengers Under Siege. But yeah, it's interesting how they've kind of paired up. Uh, kind of interestingly in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, uh, it, it'll be it, it'll be interesting going forward to how much we can compare and contrast if we start diverging 
And by if, I mean when we start diverging between, if we stick to the format that, that we kind of discussed originally of you giving me older stuff and me giving you newer stuff that I've read, because all your older stuff is superhero based and not all right. of the stuff I've read, although a, a huge portion of it, because I definitely am a superhero guy. Is that, but a lot of the a lot of the the forays the opportunity has given me as adult going to the library, and here's a free plug: go to your local library. They're awesome. <laughs> is being able to grab these volumes of the non-major, uh, non-DC, and non-Marvel comics. Image and Dynamite and is Dynamite one? I don't even know all of them. But yes, Dynamite. Dynamite it, is definitely one. Yeah, it's outstanding to watch it and. My one of my all time favorites that I don't know if you've read much of that we'll do eventually is Powers. Again, no of it. Yeah, don't think I've read but one or two issues of it. Yeah, way we'll, back we'll, when. We'll we'll definitely we're gonna do that at one point because it is also one of my favorite comics. So and that's Bendis, right? Yeah, that's Bendis. Bendis is just okay. amazing. I, and I may make you uh, read Unlimited Spider Man at some point. Ultimate Spider Man, okay. not Unlimited. I may make you read Ultimate Spider Man at some point. Sure. No, I, I I've no again no of it. I no. think I picked up some some reprints of the first couple issues, and that's about it. It is one of the best re redo of a character without did not lose anything from the original, but updated it, which is incredibly cool. hard to do. So, and uh, that's early two thousands, right? Late yeah, 90s, early that's 2000s? that's like two thousand. Yeah. Because I think, again, me being the team guy, maybe just holdover, no reason in particular. I picked up Ultimates back then. Okay. Not Ultimate Spider Man. Uh huh. You picked and up that. Yeah. I was hot and cold. Their Avengers. I book. was hot and cold on Ultimates. Yeah, I picked I, up the Avengers book, but I was hot and cold on Ultimates. Yeah. No, I I can understand that. There, there was some. Uh, the best thing out of that Ultimate Universe was Spider Man, and then I mean, if you don't know this, and then they killed off the Peter Parker, and. That's where we got Miles Morales, which oh my god, that is so awesome. It it is, it is just, just perfectly done. But I that was I if I if I'm telling the truth, thinking back, I got back into comics because of Ultimate Spider-Man. It had been out for a while, and when I would go to Barnes and Nobles, there was a fifty dollar hardback book of those, and I could not convince myself to blow fifty dollars on it. And I eventually bought the first few graphic novels on Amazon used, so I picked them up for like three bucks and started reading again. And that kind of got me back into reading comics back in, uh, I, I want to say 2007, 2008. And then I found them at the library and would get all of that stuff, so I started catching up on things. Well, cool. Well, that I think, like you said originally here at the end, I think uh -huh. this is a good probably place to stop, but that's a good preview uh -huh. of, of kind of what's going to be coming down. Yeah. And... I, I, I don't mind. I like the idea you, you know, in, in my wheelhouse is I, I don't read much recent stuff. I'm when I pick up, I'm filling in holes on runs. I just want to fill in. Mm -hmm. But I am interested to hear what you want me to read. And I will definitely read it. And I kind of like the idea for now until maybe there is something more recent I have for you. The only thing that comes to mind. Have you read Superman Red Sun? Oh, yeah. A number of times. OK, but we can absolutely right, talk well, about that, that at some point. And that's absolutely not that new, but it's it's yeah. new for it was it's newer than what you know the eighties obviously. Oh, well, yeah. well, I think I like the idea of you know for the next time it looks like it's Black Hammer at least volume two uh -huh. of, of the trade paperback graphic novel, and, and then Squadron uh, Supreme and Squadron Supreme. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right. Well, All right. well, we will get together and discuss when we should have that read by and offline for. The first episode of Hav and Charles Talk Comics, I think it was pretty good. I have no idea until I listen to it again later, but I sure Same. enjoyed doing it. I did too. I did too. It was right. fun. It's been fun, and hopefully it's going to keep on being fun. And to anybody that actually listened, uh, thanks. And Yo, feedback's thank you, always yes. appreciated. Thank you very much. And I will continue to do blatant plugs for the uh, public library. <laughs>